Welcome to another GPU overclocking and undervolting tutorial. I will guide you through the steps to overclock your RTX 3060 graphics card, as well as how you can undervolt the GPU and make it more efficient. Before we begin, you should know the following. By pure overclocking, you will gain more performance in exchange for more heat and power draw, if the GPU allows it. By undervolting the GPU, you will reduce heat and power draw while maintaining almost the same performance you are getting right now. And in some cases, you could even gain performance you could also combine these two and have better overall performance with less heat and power draw, which will heavily depend on the GPU and setup you are using. Before we begin with overclocking, we will do some benchmarking on stock settings, adjusting only the fans to 65%, which we will keep through all the scenarios in order to make it a fair comparison. You will need MSI Afterburner, Hardware Info, and a GPU benchmarking software. All these apps are free to download. So, with the RTX 3060 in synthetic benchmark, we got 13612 points in 1080p and 8893 points in 1440p resolution. Running the DLSS benchmark at 4K resolution, we see the FPS going from 11 frames native to 30 frames per second. During benchmarking, the core clock was not stable as we can see here, and that is due to the limited 170 watts TDP. The card was constantly trying not to exceed that number thus leading to an unstable core clock. The thing with the 3060 is that we can't adjust the power limit to max so that the GPU can exceed its rated TDP, thus maintaining a stable core clock. In fact, if you had this option, I would suggest doing only this step if you are not willing to OC the card. It is basically free performance you are missing on, and it works with many GPUs. Now let's move on to overclocking using MSI Afterburner and running the benchmark in window mode. Because we can increase power limits, we move directly to the VRAM clock. We increase plus 100 megahertz and apply each time until it crashes or starts showing artifacts, and we set it a step lower in order to find a stable overclock. Moving on to core clock, we set plus 10 megahertz and apply each time we go 10 megahertz higher until we hit a crash or start seeing artifacts and then go down 10 to 20 megahertz. That should be our stable clock. We managed to get the GPU run stable at plus 230 megahertz core clock and plus 1400 megahertz on the memory clock. Doing a rerun, we got this time 14876 points in 1080p and 9733 points in 1440p which is about 10% increase in pure FPS performance. Testing DLSS with an overclock, we had the same gains as well, and worth mentioning here is the difference DLSS does. Comparing the GPU clock, temperatures and power draw, we see how overclocking affects the efficiency of the GPU. With the RTX 3060, it isn't affecting too much because the card is already running at almost max TDP. Let's try now and undervolt the GPU and see how much of a difference it makes, and if you should rather undervolt this graphics card. We will try to keep as close as possible to the stock boost clock and see how that goes. Now undervolting is a bit trickier than overclocking and it requires more effort. We start by reading the max core voltage and GPU clock during the stock benchmarks. Once we know these values, we open the curve editor and click on the square corresponding to a lower voltage increment by around 25 millivolts. We press the up arrow key until the square corresponds to your stock core clock. Then, we select every square point on the right by holding shift and pressing enter. This will move them down or up as required making sure they are on the same frequency and save this profile. We need to do that along with a running benchmark and continue going 25 millivolts down each time. On this GPU we achieved to go down to 875 millivolts while staying very close to our stock boost clock. What you may notice is that although you set the value lower, the V-Core tends to increase by a bit, so there is no point in going further down. Doing a rerun, we got this time 13.545 and 1080p and 8,899 points in 1440p, and DLSS gave us also about the same as stock. Now from here on, you could try to increase the core clock or VRAM clock and see if you could extract some more performance. I would suggest starting with VRAM first and maybe increasing the voltage by a bit in order to make it stable. Now let's see all the results compared to each other. Comparing the core clocks, temperatures and power draw. For each test we see that the undervolting gives us a stable clock throughout the benchmark and the GPU temperatures fall drastically. The most significant difference is the power draw, which dropped from 170 watts to an amazing 125 watts on average, which is more than 25% lower while performing almost identically to stock. That is a good tell that with some tweaking you can achieve more performance by combining overclocking and undervolting. Now, which method you will use and how far you can go is up to you and your hardware. 
So that was it for today. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to our channel for more overclocking videos, and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. See you on the next one.